see that the screen, my document. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, thank you very much, first of all, for inviting me to or agreeing to let me speak at your um, chapter function. Um, as you said, I'm a. Uh, I've been in the business of checks for a long time, um, but I've also been a project manager um, way, way, way back when. So, I do know a bit about project management. Um, so, before we start, just just let me cover three things that are, are quite important. I think. Number one, congratulations to India for winning the test series against Australia. Great stuff. Brilliant. The second thing is, if you see me sort of juggling about a bit, I've, I'm suffering a bit with a, uh, some back pain, which I have to get, get sorted out. So I tend to have to shuffle myself around to reduce the pain. And finally, um, Yesterday, I did a, a session for the PMI chapter in South, uh, South, um, Saudi Arabia, and um, there were a few people reported some audio problems. I've had a session earlier on today for an hour, and there were no audio problems, but just a word of warning, you may get some audio problems. I've yet to have it properly checked out, but this afternoon, it was no problem. So those three things I'll get out of the way with, first of all. Right. Okay. Um, first of all, I was going to introduce myself. I had a slide which I just cut out because um, I was introduced anyway. So I'll just go straight in to content. Okay. So what am I going to speak about today? Quite a few things. I'm going to give you some context because I'm going to be speaking about change management, but you need to understand from, from which sort of area I'm coming from when I'm speaking about change management. So I need to give you a bit of context first. Then... I'll be going through what actually is the difference between project management and change management. What is the, what is the main differences between the two disciplines? I'm going to be talking a little bit about the different aspects of roles and responsibilities between project managers and change managers. And as part of that, I'm going to give you some personal examples of where I've acted as a change manager in collaboration with a project manager and the roles and responsibilities that I had, the roles and responsibilities that the project manager had. I'm then going to talk about the subject of integration. How do you actually integrate the two? If you want to, that is. There is a case for integration, um, and I'll be going into more detail about that. And then my final slide will be um, a success and failure slide, um, which basically says that um, oh, I, won't, I, won't, I won't give it away. We'll just wait till the end. OK, so so that's the content of today. It's going to take about, I think, 50 minutes to an hour. Um, and then we've got half an hour at the end for questions, um, which we can um, go through and uh, you, you can put the questions in on chat. Right. Um, I won't my, just bear with me, my slide seems to have jammed, just bear with me one moment, ah, that's it, I've got it now, okay, sorry about that, so, first thing is, are you ready? I know there's a lot of you there, so um, I'll go ahead anyway, even if you're not ready, um, okay, as I said, some context. And I'll, I'll also be drinking a bit of water while I'm going to get a very dry mouth. So, context. As I said, I'm going to be coming at this from the, from the perspective of the change manager, because that's what I do, basically. So, I'm going to be talking a lot about change management, but obviously I'm going to be talking about project management, but it is from the perspective of a change manager, right? Um, and change the, 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 the um, project management versus change management has been an ongoing debate for what seems like a lifetime. Yeah, um, I first wrote about this in August 2014, would you believe? So it must have the debate must have been going on before that anyway. And the article is on my LinkedIn profile if you want to go and visit it in it, but I'm going to be talking about what I said in the article anyway, because I still believe that what I said in that article um, stands today. 
Um, the article had over 17,000 views. My third best article, I think it was, had over 200 reactions and about 60, uh, 63 comments. So it was quite popular. And I still, refer, as I said, I still refer people to it today when the debate about project management and change management comes up. And that debate comes up regularly. Um, I can assure you, absolutely regularly. Just in case you don't know, I'm going to tell you what kind of change management I'm talking about. First of all, there is change management project, that is managing change requests, the process where project changes are identified, documented, analyzed, and decided upon, approved or rejected. Then there is change management organizational, managing the people side of change. A structured, if it's a structured approach to transitioning individuals, and teams and organizations from a current state to a desired future state. That is what I'm going to be speaking about today or this evening. Okay, so organizational change management, just to be very clear. Um, when I first started on the um, speaking on the uh, uh, PMI um, chapter circuit, which was last year, or my seventh or eighth chapter meeting um, I've attended now, I looked, I, I searched over, I searched for information um, on the PMI website for some information about change management. And what I did find, I found a, 2000, a 2013 practice guide called Managing Change in, organization, in Organizations. Okay, it's old, 2013, seven years old, but um, I couldn't find anything newer. In that it says, organizational change projects are the fourth most common type of project undertaken, but only 20% of organizations adopt a formal organizational change management practice. Um, I would think it's no longer the fourth most common type undertaken. I would think it's probably about number one or two now um, over the years. So only 20% of organizations adopt a formal organizational change management practice. Studies show, many studies show, that organizations achieve a higher success rate by using standardized portfolio, program, and project management techniques in concert with a rigorous change management approach. Okay, And that's what I'm going to be trying to um, explain to you today about how in parallel. And the other thing I'll say just before I uh, go on, to the main part of the presentation, regardless of type or projects, are change projects, every project that somebody undertakes actually initiates some kind of change in an organization, whatever it may be. Okay, so that's, that's basically the context over with. Okay, so let's get started with what is the difference, uh, the chalk and cheese. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, PM and CM is not aligned with each other. Okay. There seems to be sometimes a misalignment of um, roles and responsibilities and so forth. Um, traditionally, projects have been run by project managers using a structured project management approach. But there is a fundamental difference between project management and change management. What is it? Project management is about installation. It focuses on a plan around events and timelines with the aim of getting from a current state, no installation, the future state installation achieved. So if you're implementing a software solution, you've um, configured it in everything, uh, go live, it goes live, it gets installed. That's it. Installation. Change management, however, is about it focuses on the people aspects of the change with the aim of getting a critical mass of people to be committed to the change involved to learn new behaviors and to sustain them willingly. Okay, so that's one difference. Let me give you an example of um, how I think, or how, in my experience, how projects have worked. Before. Let's go 
go live scenario. So a project, yeah, its plan says we go live on whatever date. The project manager has a number of activities that they undertake up to go live. And they have to deliver on that go live date to time, cost and quality. And I'm going to be using those words quite a few times during the presentation. OK, but my experience and I've trained, I have a, I have a training course, a two day change management training course. I've trained quite a few project managers. And what they've said to me is that once they've hit their go live date for them, that's their job finished and they want to move on to the next project. Okay. I've done it. I've installed it. They've got live. It's working. Thank you very much. On to the next project. All right. Change managers also have certain responsibilities pre go live. Things like communication, things like measuring business readiness, things like training management to name but a few. There's plenty more. However, where the difference is, is post go live because whilst the PM has said, I'm finished, I've installed, I'm on to my next project. The change manager actually has quite a bit of work to do after go live. So they have things like make sure that people adopt and use the solution, whatever the solution is, whether it's process or a new technology. They have to manage things like benefits realization. And there's also still a lot of communication to do uh, after, after the go live date. There is the difference. There's quite a clear difference between um, the way a project manager thinks and, 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 and works and the way a change manager thinks and works. But I'll go into a bit more detail about that later. The project management institute says so the project manager is accountable for the success or failure of a project. They are responsible for the planning and closing of the project. Fine. Further, the project manager is also responsible for managing teams, as of course they are, ensuring progress, yes, absolutely, and, in, and motivating project team members. How would they get the job done otherwise? They are responsible for, for ensuring that the project goals are in alignment with what the key stakeholders think they're going to get or expect they're going to get. Organisational called ProSci. I'm not sure whether you've heard of them. They are the probably the most successful, largest train, change management training outfit on the planet. They're big. They train a lot of change management. In their own change management. They say about the change manager, they will play a key role in ensuring projects, change initiatives. Remember that previous slide. Meet objectives on time and on budget, same as the project manager, um, by increasing employee adoption and usage. Now that's where the difference is, okay? The post go live stuff. They will focus on the people side of change, including things like changes to business processes, systems, technology, job roles and organizational structures, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I recently, while I was doing some research for um, uh, delivering these these sessions, I, I, I found a blog in, uh, uh, dated 2019 by Susan Suzanne Madsden, who is a project leadership coach, called "What Are the Three Biggest Mistakes That Project Managers Make?" Ooh, okay, I'm being a bit provocative now. <laughs> Mistake number one. Managing tasks and events at the expense of leading people. The most common mistake project managers make is that they are more concerned with tasks and events rather than with people and the human impact of change, often unknowingly, because they're too focused on you know delivering what they have to do. Many project managers have a rational, logical, and analytical agree with that okay um, i just had a question saying am i sharing this yes i am sharing it and every, um, i hope everyone can see it anyway she goes on to say they are good at analyzing facts calculating duration coordinating activities and making rational decisions furthermore 
They're task focused and see their primary role as delivering what the customer has asked for within the agreed parameters of time, cost and quality. I told you I'd mention that again earlier. Then she goes on to say they are less concerned with why their customer needs the product and in which way it affects their business to develop it and use it. And finally, she says their strength is in executing and following someone else's vision and specification rather than helping to define it. So the vision's been defined, give it to the project manager, build a project plan, get a go live date, deliver what we've said. Okay. So I've given you a few sort of facts and figures and a few things to be thinking about, but let me now go into a bit more detail, okay. Let's start with a very simplistic view of project management. Project managers make the change. They deliver. Whilst project, uh, sorry, change managers help adopt the change. They have to make sure that whatever's delivered, people adopt and use, which is what I call the holy grail of change management. It's what we work to. Go into a bit more detail now. Project manager, change manager. Prioritizes project manager, technical side of the project, change manager, the people side of the project. Project manager manages things like scope, time, quality, budget, which I told you I'd speak about many times. Um, the change manager manages adoption, resistance, engagement. Very different. The outcome for a project manager is the solution delivery, whereas the outcome for a change manager is usage and adoption. Like I said, this is what change managers work to. Right, more detail now. Let's start delve. Let's start digging. Number one, change management is only an idea. Unlike project management, which is the development of an idea. Project management has a timeline, while change management does not. I will qualify that one because there are certain things that change managers can do that have timelines. They can build a communication plan and deliver uh, communication to a timeline. They can um, monitor business readiness through surveys, etc. There are things that they can actually put into a project. Number three, change management needs many ideas to make one vision, while project management just needs one vision. This is what I have to deliver. Change management is actually structuring the vision, while project management is creating the milestones to deliver. Finally, number five, Project management already has a defined goal. They've got to deliver whatever on go live date, whereas change management can be adjusted at any second. What tends to happen in projects, and I've been in many projects as a change manager, um, things change from day to day. The project plan stays the same, but from a change management perspective, the people side of change, things change from day to day, and you have to manage those things within the time scales that you've got. So that's what I mean by can be adjusted at any second. All right, let me give you some perspectives from a project management and a change management side of things. Um, first one, project managers see the organization as a structured hierarchy. As change managers see the organization as a loosely connected group of people without Project manager is expert at dealing with plans, resources, and data. Whereas a change manager is expert at dealing with people and the way they behave. Project manager performs at their best faced with certainty and predictability. Whereas a change manager is, uh, performs at their best when faced with ambiguity and unpredictability. And let's face it, when you're managing the people side of change, people can be very, very unpredictable. 
a project manager takes their perspective from outside the business. There's a change manager takes their perspective from inside the business looking out. Project manager concentrates on the time horizon of up to go live, as I previously showed you in the in the uh, as, as that slide. Whereas a change manager goes well beyond go live. Project managers are rewarded for delivery. Here we go again <laughs> to time, cost, and quality. Whereas change managers are rewarded for business readiness and user adoption. Project manager deals with facts and figures, dates, etc. Whilst the project manager deals with people's perceptions and emotions. Project managers' deliverables are primarily, primarily tangible. They know what they have to deliver within what time scale. Whereas the deliverables of a change manager are intangible, which again, I'm going to qualify because some of the deliverables of a time manager, as a uh, change manager, excuse me, a moment. As I said before, are tangible. Um, communication, business readiness, training. You can put dates on it. So they, are they are tangible. Okay. So kind of intangible. Um, uh, I should have put tangible and intangible, but. Um, the project manager takes the approach which tries to drive a straight line from A to B. Whereas a change manager navigates round the least path of resistance. And finally, project manager primarily needs to be structured. Whereas a change manager needs to be very, very flexible. Again. Right. So, given you uh, quite a bit of information on the sort of the difference between the two, talk about roles and responsibilities because I think this is this is where it really comes into its own in terms of the difference. Okay, um, I've kind of split this at a high level into hard project management type roles and soft change management type roles, and this is at a high level. Not all. But just to give you an idea. Defi the project manager defines the project scope. They manage the resources, they shape the work tasks, they manage issues and risks, and they manage cutover and delivery. Soft side, on the change management side, they, de they deal with project communication, stakeholder management, business readiness, training management, and usage and adoption. That's at a very high level. Um, unfortunately, leaders often undervalue the two distinct roles of this of the, of the two management subjects they do undervalue and I'm, I'm going to say it they undervalue the role of the change manager as opposed to the project manager okay pm project management is a business decision enabler while change management is a people they have job roles and responsibilities that require very different skill sets. For example, for example, change management works on change sustainability and integration. They communicate progress and impact. They manage the people side risk. They also focus on the people side strategies. They follow a change management life cycle and they manage and they motivate people. Project management side of things, the skill sets, things like drive solution delivery, focuses on top again, time, cost, and quality, manages the technical risk, manages the project from start to end, follows a project management life cycle, and finally delivers the project solution. So they're the kind of different skill sets of a project manager and a change manager. Right, just to sort of um, bring home the point about roles and responsibilities, let me give you some personal examples of where I've worked in collaboration with a project manager. So the first one, I was an IT change and communications manager for a head office move. This was in Singapore. For um, my role responsibilities, call them what you will, was develop and deliver all IT-related communications and change for their HQ relocation in Singapore. 
move 800 people from the centre of Singapore to a purpose. Uh, purpose. My responsibilities were, I had to develop the change strategy. Okay, how are we going to get there? I had to look at, I had to develop learning, planning and delivery. So any learning that people needed, any training that people needed, I had to do that. I had to manage all the communications planning and delivery. I did all the stakeholder, most of the stakeholder engagement and I undertook change impact analysis. Project manager I was working with, manage the project plan i didn't my tasks were in that project plan but i didn't manage the project plan they did project and milestone reporting infrastructure planning and implementation risks and issue management budget management and so, quite different roles and responsibilities second example I was a business change manager for an SAP implementation um, for Manitowoc. Um, and my role for Manitowoc, this again was in Singapore. Um, uh, they build high rise cranes for. Um, my role was to manage all communications, training, and business readiness activities for the Asia SAP implementation. It was across Singapore, Korea, um, uh, Australia, and the Philippines. So, what did I do? I did business readiness and readiness monitoring. So I wanted to see whether the business was ready for that. I dealt with all the communications. I developed the training approach. I also was asked to manage user and user acceptance test, testing, would you believe, which I haven't done. Um, I did any, any relevant process and organization design, and I also managed all the stakeholders. Project managers, roles and responsibilities. They manage the plan again. They manage the project team. They manage gap fit analysis. They did data management and cutover. They planned the training, not developed the training, and they did cutover and go live planning. So a few things that were sort of uh, aligned, but you know, quite different again in terms of roles and responsibilities. And finally, the third one. This is going back a bit. I was I was a business process change manager. Um, for um, Orange that's now everything everywhere. And they were wanting to develop a new target operating model for their new SAS uh, business um, infrastructure. So I was change manager responsible. What did I do? Okay, organization realignment because they had two different groups of people working on the same thing. Business process capture, they had never captured their business process all the stakeholder engagement, all the relevant communication, any education and training, and business readiness monitoring. The project manager managed the project plan again. They did all the project governance and reporting, infrastructure and environment planning, risk and issue management, business requirement, and code management. So again, very, very different, but we worked in collaboration with each other to deliver the project. I've gave you those three examples of roles and responsibilities. And what I'd just like to share with you now is, is how I worked together with the project manager and the project team on those on those specific those specific examples, but also on other projects that I've undertaken. So the way I like to work is you have a change employed to manage change, obviously. Okay. You have a project team. The other side, you have all the impacted stakeholders. Okay. The way I like to work is I like to sit between the two groups of people and be the conduit between the project and the impacted stakeholders. Okay. Um, I try to keep it an independent role, but more often than not, I'm actually part of the project team. But when, when I'm part of the project team, I actually very much face the business in terms of what I do. So it's a kind of, um, you know, piggy in the middle role, <laughs> if you like. Um, and really it's because um, previously what I found is that, um, let me give you an example of communications. If the project manager or the project team were allowed to communicate, they would tend to talk in technical terms, 
They would tend to use three letter acronyms, etc., which the impacted stakeholder, the business that are going to actually use the solution, probably don't really understand. So in that example, what I would do is take whatever communication the project manager or the project team wanted to deliver, look at it, rehash it, make it simpler, take out the three letter acronyms, take out all the technical stuff and make it business related. And then that would be that would then go out to the impacted stakeholders. It's just an example as being the conduit between the two. All right, so that was roles and responsibilities. OK, let's take, speak about the important bit now. The case for actually integrating roles. It's not as easy as you think. Okay. Both change management and project management support an organization from a current state how things are done today through a transition state to a desired future state. New processes, systems, organizational structures, or job roles as defined by the change. What is the change? Okay. So they're working in alignment with each other, getting from the as is to the to be. There's no argument about that whatsoever. Okay. Um, but we talked about roles. Okay. So Integration begins with role clarity. You have to be very clear on what your role is, as I kind of did with the three examples I gave you. But unfortunately, one of the problems with that is there is a lack of understanding between the, the roles of project manager and change manager in many organizations. I've got into organizations where they've taken, on, taken me on as a change manager and there's been an expectation that I did completely different things that they took me on for. So role clarity is very important. So besides confusion around role clarity, there's also other barriers um, to, to, uh, to project and change management integration that I will now make you aware of. So first of all, even now, today, and I've been in this business for four decades, but I must admit it wasn't called change management when I started out. But even today, the discipline of change management still seems to be in its infancy. Change management professionals like me uh, are in the early phases of actually converting the non-believers. You know, if someone says, says, if somebody, two people are there together and someone asks the question of the other person and says, what do you do? And they say, oh, I'm a project manager. There's an immediate understanding of what that is, okay? But Again, in my experience, if someone asks me what I do, um, I say, I'm a change manager. They go, what? What's that? Please explain. I don't understand. What do you mean? Okay, so that's the problem. That's the problem. Um, the second thing is, since the role of project management has expanded significantly, most project managers do not have the capacity or, and I'm going to be provocative again, ability to learn change management, although you can. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> change management is not easily measured, but you can measure some things. Yeah, Since the results are often intangible. So problem is executives, sponsors, the people that hold the checkbook, who control budgets, struggle to justify the expense and fail to get behind change efforts. They, you know, uh, in my experience, there's a lot of um, C-suite PCIOs, CFOs, CEOs who just don't understand change management and what it's about. Finally, talking of the C-suite, while project management has been ingrained deeply within the fabric of most organizations, everybody has project managers, every organization, most every organization has a project manager of some sort but not every organization has a change manager. So change management is still struggling today for a seat. That's the big problem, is an understanding of exactly what change management is. The importance of project management and change management to project success. Now, this is the results of a uh, survey that was done on LinkedIn a few years ago. And they asked two simple questions. First question was, how important is project management to change success? 
the results came back as 25% critical, 68%. And the rest is a nice to have. They then switched the question around and said, how important is change management to project success? Well, guess what? Critical, 48%, necessary, 43%. And the rest is a nice to have. So you had almost 100% increase when you asked that second question, which kind of tells its own story, really. Um, this next one is um, data from ProSight, who I mentioned before, the biggest change management trainers on the on the globe on the globe, and they gather data from their their webinars. And one of the things they always ask is is how well is change management and project management integrated in your organization? Good question. Left-hand axis, extremely well down to extremely poorly. Bottom axis, 0% to 50%. So first one, yes, it's extremely well integrated. Oh, 4% about, mm, okay. Ah, it's well integrated. Oh, really? 12%. It's acceptably integrated. Oh, that's better. Yeah, but acceptably, what does that mean? That's about 34%. Oh dear, it's poorly integrated. It's about 42%. And finally, extremely poorly integrated, about 88%. So in fact, what the data shows is that 50% of organizations have either poorly or extremely poorly integrated project management and change management. What does that do for the success of projects? Not a lot. And I think that also tells its own story. Right. So we talked about integration. We talked about the importance of integration. Okay. I think there are five steps that you should follow to try and integrate project management and change management in your organization. Step one starts with education, obviously informing leaders, stakeholders, project managers, and the project team members that the benefits of change management is critical to project success. Number two, set expectations around how change work gets done. And acknowledge that the discipline of change management is, is actually based on facts and insights gathered through data processes. We do a lot of data gathering. You know, we're not just dealing with the mindsets and changing people's behaviors. We actually use data, yeah, to actually make a point. So, you know, it's not all soft, soft stuff. It's some hard data stuff. Okay? Number three, I've kind of talked about this before on the, on the slide where I was uh, talking about being the conduit. Use consumer friendly and basic language while describing the change process and work efforts because the process for change management may be viewed as inefficient to the untrained eye. Number four, ensure that project management and change management synergy by presenting a unified front to project leadership, stakeholders, and team members. Look guys, we're working together. Yeah? We, we are aligned. And finally, collaborate, which I've talked about at length, with the project manager and key stakeholders to embed a change methodology in subsequent deliverables within a master project plan and status report. As I mentioned before, a lot of times I work with a project manager, there is a lot of stuff that I can put into a project plan. So that is absolutely tangible. But the things that you can't put in a project plan is how you deal with people's uh, views of culture, how you deal with handling people's resistance. Yeah? Those things are kind of difficult to put in a, you know, you can't say, well, I'm going to reduce resistance from 90% um, uh, to 50% in the next four weeks. You can't do it. Yeah? Because change resistance is individual. Change resistance is individual. Right, there is a conundrum with all of this, okay? Can just one individual be both a project manager and a change manager? Good question. Or should they be two 
different individuals. That's the conundrum. Normally, as I sort of I I intimated before, the, uh, the people that sign off the budgets will take the first option, project manager and a change of plan. Luckily enough, um, I've gone through my working career um, being a separate change manager. So a CM and a PM model of working in partnership, from my perspective, is the way forward. The PM with a responsibility for change management, or conversely, a CM with a responsibility for project management, I think just puts too much pressure on an individual, and they may not necessarily have the right experience and skill set to manage both elements. But it always comes down to budget. Budget manager, you'll have to handle it. Okay. Luckily enough, CIO Magazine agrees with me. Thank you, CIO Magazine. Um, this was about a year ago, I think I picked this up. They said, when projects are initiated, they create a significant amount of undue stress on stakeholders and employees in general. Okay? While project managers maintain complete focus on overall project objectives with the goal of ensuring stakeholder value, Change management professionals should not only attend project meetings, but also be an integral part of the project team. I've actually sat on a steer steering boards before because they've recognised the importance of change management. Unfortunately, I've also been thrown off a steering board before for red flagging something that they didn't think I should have red flagged, but that's one of those things, I'm afraid. Um, so the CIO go on to say, collaborating provides an holistic approach to strategy and ensures the impact to people can be sufficiently addressed to reduce unnecessary stress and anxiety and also create a smooth transition in terms of processes and acceptance during the long uh, during and long after sorry the process is complete and finally overall organizations should encourage change management professionals and project managers to, to work closely together to ensure that the project efforts and the resulting change are sufficiently addressed to reduce the impact on the people and level of product and service delivery. So thank you very much, CAO Magazine, for agreeing with me. Great. Um, how do you actually select? What are, you've got a project, okay? So you say, how are we going to staff this project? Are we going to use project manager and change manager? Or are we going to just use one person? How do you select it? I, I picked this, um, this um, um, up from PMI chapter. PMI Carolina, I think, in the US. Okay, And they kind of put this um, 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 four-stage uh, four approach forward. So at the left-hand side, you've got, you have a supportive culture and support. Bottom, you have a degree of behavioural change that the project is going to deliver. You have low or high. So, first of all, if you have a low degree of behavioural change and you have strong supportive leadership, you can you can employ a PM with some CM skills. Secondly, if you have a high degree of behavioural change and a strong supportive culture leadership, you can also have a look at a PM plus strong CM skill, skills as PM with strong CM skills, sorry, or a PM and a CM. And the other two are kind of similar, okay? So very high level um, look at how you can select whether you need one or two people. Um, I have, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be talking to you, I have what I call a suggested partnership model. And again, this is, uh, this is how I've worked before. Below that, you have a steering board or program board, whatever you want to call them. Below that, you have a project manager who reports into the steering group or program board. But you also have a change manager that does the same and works in participation, collaboration, call it what you will, with the project manager. They work hand in hand. Okay? The project manager obviously has his project team. The change manager sometimes 
very rarely has a change team. Um, in my experience and my working career, I've normally been the only one that's been managing the team. With the odd occasion where I've been allowed to bring in a process. In, in um, to all intents and purposes, it's been me. There is a way around that, which I'll come to in a minute. Then you've got the business down there. Okay, and as I said, the change team acts as the conduit between the project team and the business. The sponsor, who the change manager works with, also has some very specific responsibilities that they have to deliver to the business. Okay. But there's a lot of them, so that's to do. And when I said that it's normally been me as the individual, the change team, well, what I've done in each of those circumstances is I've actually built a change agents are um, people from the operational side of the business who know the business like the back of their hand. You, you actually build a network of these change parts of the organization that are going to be impacted. Deliver some change management training to them and they become your right hand. And it's very, very successful when you use change agents because you have that big network of people you can work with. So that's just a suggested partnership model. But again, as I said before, it comes down to budget. Right, we are on the final slides now. Um, I hope I haven't bored you too much. Project success and failure. Big debate about what is success and what is failure. And how do you actually measure success and failure? And there's this, this one percentage that really, what's the phrase, gets up my nose. The 70% failure rate, which is not true. It's a myth. But... We won't talk about that here. So, project success and failure. Proci. Um, and th again, this is from um, their webinars and data they, they take from organizations that they work with um, regularly over the years. Proci say, without change management, employees feel surprised and overwhelmed by the change. Okay. That can result, I say can, okay, can result in failed project results, not necessarily in a failed project, but some aspects of the project. It can, um, it can uh, create extended timelines, okay? It can also add additional project costs, and there all will also be low adoption and usage rate after go live without change management. Because remember I said the project manager tends to leave the project once it's been delivered. They go on to say, with change management, employees feel prepared and supported for the change. And the result of this is that projects are six times more likely to achieve their objectives. Second one is they're five times more likely to stay on schedule. Third one is two times more likely to stay on budget. And finally, Fourth one is an increase of people oriented um, ROI. Um, this, if you've got your device handy, I'd like you to complete a survey for me. So if you scan this barcode and just give me some feedback, but I will send out this slide deck um, together with a link to the survey. But if I just give this a few seconds for you to scan and you can input the survey as soon as I finish, that would be great. But um, the reason I ask for feedback is because I'm forever trying to improve this delivery because I've got more um, chapters to deliver to. I've got Singapore chapter. I've got Pakistan Karachi chapter to deliver to. Um, I've got the Israel chapter to deliver to. Um, I've just had a request from a, a US chapter. Can't remember the name of it. So. I'm delivering to a lot more chapters. It's part of my, my 2021 objectives is to deliver as many project management versus change management sessions to PMI chapters as possible. So if you scan that, as I said, though, I will send out the, the slide deck afterwards. That gentleman, ladies and gentlemen, sorry, is the end of um, my session. 
So if I stop sharing now. Thank you, Ron. Uh, that was a wonderful session. Yes, as you initially mentioned, there was some uh, audio issues in between, but uh, it was uh, it was it doesn't affect the flow of the presentation, so it was fine. Okay. So, uh, thank you, thank you for that uh, wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, there are a lot of discussions that are happening in the chat box as well, <laughs> which proves that uh, change management versus project management is a hot topic today as well, <laughs> and people are very much interested in that uh, debate. Yes. Uh, so I think in the current working culture, it is basically the organizations are not able to identify the requirement of a change management in their organization. And uh, they, that with the project management is one of the major concerns uh, which we see in the current scenario is what I feel. Okay. Um, can, sorry, um, carry on. Sorry, I, I interrupted. Uh, no, no, no. Please, please, please. I thought that I will go to questions if anybody has. Well, uh, I thought that if you want to uh, say anything. I was, I was just going to say um, I've got my chat function open, and if I go, if I go through this and see if they just pick out the odd question, is that okay? Yeah, absolutely okay. fine. Absolutely okay. fine. Um, all right, first question says, can we say change management is a subset of project management? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, a change manager and a project manager have to work in capital collaboration with equal responsibility for what they do. Yeah. My view, there are opposing views, obviously, but my view is that change management should not be a subject subset of project management. And let me give you an example why, a very quick one, it comes to business readiness monitoring, okay? Um, I, I, for every project I do, I try and um, monitor business readiness, which is a, a cyclical survey throughout the project life cycle um, to see how ready the business are for um, project go live in certain areas. Um, a project manager will deliver to the to the uh, um, go live day anyway. However, um, the uh, business readiness survey might say that the, the business aren't ready to go live. Okay, so if you have a change manager reporting into a project manager, the project manager will probably just say, and again, I'm being a bit provocative here. We're going live anyway, and the sponsor will say that, and the steering board will say that. But if you have an equal representation. The change manager can say, you won't, you shouldn't go live. You're, the business are not ready to go live. And if you go live now, you won't get the results that you're achieving. So it becomes a, it becomes a debate. And I'll tell you something. <laughs> I've had this debate on three or four occasions in a project where I've said, don't go live. And the, the reasoning and the answer from the program board or steering group has always been, we're going live anyway. So, <laughs> but you need to have equal responsibility. All right. Um, change uh, management. From, sorry, yeah. from that, uh, sorry, from that point, I just want to ask: in in that scenario, won't it impact the triple constraint of the project, like timeline, scope, and budget, all those things? Uh, so, how we will manage those things? Sorry, say that again. I didn't quite uh, catch that. Okay. Uh, when when uh, we decide saying that, okay, we don't uh, go live at this point of time because of yeah. why and these are reasons. Uh, my point is that uh, won't it impact the triple constraints of the project, like timeline, scope, um, and there yeah. will be an additional risk, um, resources yeah. availability. Those things will be there, and maybe an application going live at that point of time is having a huge business impact, business advantage probably. Those yeah. Impacted, right? Yeah. And let me give you another example. I worked on a project here in Thailand, and I read flag training. Um, and it was um, they were shortly due to go live, and I red flagged it. And I said they're not ready because we we instituted a um, a um, measurement process where they did a pre-training assessment and a post-training assessment. Um, so ten questions, four answers. Choose one answer for each of the ten questions. Okay. So we we got all the scores from the pre-training assessment. They were trained. Then we asked them to fill out the same ten quest to answer the same ten questions post-training. And the actual um, data showed that the post-trace post-assessment was less worse than the pre-assessment. So I red flagged the training. I said it wasn't good enough. If you go live with the way the people have been trained. It won't work. Um, I was overridden. 
by the steering group. And they said, we're going live anyway. Uh, so, and what we did was we put in place some um, some uh, change interventions in terms of sort of on the job training, et cetera, have to go live just to make sure that, you know, those people that did have the lower post assessment um, score did actually were able to do their job. <laughs> OK. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah. OK. Um, just to believe seeing my organization may incorporate both drivers by a single person. OK, blah, blah, blah. So what comes what? So what? does success look like for a change manager? Good question. From my perspective is success is all about adoption and um, there's three things. Business readiness, which I kind of talked about a minute ago, making sure that business are ready for go live. And then that's post go live, then uh, pre go live, and then post go live, it's number of people using it and number of people adopting it, the new solution, whatever it may be. That is what change success looks like. Okay. If you have a high level, if you have a go readiness, a, a, a business readiness score that says your business is ready, and if you have a high adoption rate and a usage rate post go live, that's what to me change success looks like. Um, okay, next one. Let's have a look. Uh, not accepting with you at all. In my opinion, change management is a subset of project management. Project management have all the skill set of change management. What you're explaining is not possible. It is possible because I've done it before. I have delivered with a project manager before. And if you're saying it's not possible, it is absolutely possible. I am living proof that it's possible. OK, you have a look at my LinkedIn profile. I've got over 100 recommendations on there for training and project work. Okay? I wouldn't have those recommendations on there unless I'd worked in conjunction with the project manager. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, the project manager has a, a big responsibility to deliver the project, okay? And I, I totally agree with that, and, and that's not the question. The question is, do they have the scope, the capability, the understanding of change management to be able to handle not just what some people think change management is, a bit of communication, a bit of training, because it's not. The biggest issue, a change manager is converting people's mindsets and behaviors yeah from working in the old way of working to start thinking about the new ways of working yeah? because it's this up here that people use to resist that change yeah and unless you involve them unless you make people aware of the things that are happening etc they will never change a project manager doesn't have time to deal with people at that level again this is my view so yeah i'm living proof that it works okay. stakeholder management is also part of project management yes it is the project manager has stakeholders to report to when i talk of stakeholder management i mean impacted stakeholders so the people that would be working with the new solution the project management stakeholders may be people like the steering board senior managers etc cetera, etc cetera. but yes yeah, we all have stakeholders to report to. And one of the things when you do stakeholder um, analysis is to say all these stakeholders are from the impacted business community or these stakeholders are from a project management perspective. So the project manager manages one batch, the change manager manages another batch. So, yes, I agree. Um, in communication management. To an extent, yes, um, a project manager can communicate, but I kind of explained some of the difficulties that the business has when they receive communications from a project team in terms of the sort of technical focus and so on. Um, can rich and cash rich engagements can afford to have PM and CM both, but Indian expectation is to have, yeah, okay, I agree with that. Uh, some large project is just easier to separate the two. That's a good. That's a good one. That that uh, statement there. Uh, some some projects. Um, it's easier to separate the two. Two. It is for smaller projects. 
you might be able to get away with a project manager only who has some kind of change capability. Yeah. But for big enterprise-wide projects, some of the big ERP implementations or some of the new technologies that um, um, organizations are implementing nowadays, you need to have that separate focus and uh, uh, in, in view of all the things I've mentioned before about all the issues about changing mindsets and behaviors and you know new ways of working and stuff like that. Um, Okay, let me scroll down a bit longer, a bit more. I respect your thoughts on your project manager like machine, not accepting at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, PM box does represent an ambiguity on change management. I, I don't know much about the PM box, so I won't comment on that. Uh, the conundrum sounds like a PM test question. Yeah, put it in there, why not? <laughs> Sometimes it's the senior PM who could take responsibility of CM. Yes, again, it depends on the initiative you're working on. You know, um, I have a, I have a favourite phrase that I use: horses for courses. It really depends on a whole host of things. How you actually structure your project in terms of project management, change management, and project team and change team. Um, in general, project manager handles the task to complete the project. And change management management is done from head office, more like program management. Uh, uh, no, I disagree. Uh, change management is for the people with the people. Change management is not done from the head office. I mentioned in one of my, my slides about using the change agents, the network of change agents. And these people are from the operational side of the business. They are from the coal face of the business. Yeah. And they are co-opted onto the change team to help the change manager with all of their responsibilities in delivering the change to the, the, the greater good, the impacted stakeholders. Um, first of all, thanks, blah, 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 and also PMI. General project manager hands of the task to complete the project. We've been out with that one. And also the PMI. Um, Insightful seminar. Always thought change management was a part of project management. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Um, change team essentially requires a change architect, change system admin, change assessment SME, change training is key personnel. A lot of processes and policy change advisors who need to work together to make change happen. I think you may have the kind of um, different view of change management as I see it because I don't see. Um, yes, SMEs would be part of, subject matter experts would be part of um, the, probably the um, change agents team and could be co-opted onto the change management team because the subject matter experts are exactly what they are, subject matter experts. So they would be very useful in the process, okay? It's not envisaged in the contract and client models of agreements. How's the project delivery and product delivery and change delivery be accepted as standard practice? Uh, standard practice, there is no such thing as standard practice when it comes to organisations um, deciding on how best they're going to deliver a project. Yeah, there, unfortunately, there isn't. Okay. Um, good content. There's lots, lots of congratulations, good presentation. Thank you very much. Um, da -da -da -da, great stuff. Thank you, Ron. I think we've kind of sort of run over time now. So, um, oh, just one more question here before I finish. Is change management part of HR or is it part of the operational management team? Change management should never ever be part of HR because they are two distinct different disciplines. HR is very transactional focused, change management is not, yeah? However, HR has a, an important role to play in the change management delivery function because HR, excuse me a moment, can help when you're having to change roles and responsibilities and or if you're redesigning organizational structures or you need information about stakeholders, etc. So HR should be involved, okay, but change management should not be part of HR. Now, this is kind of the model that's being used here in Asia, where HR actually have a responsibility for change. And I'm afraid it doesn't work very well. Um, in my experience, it doesn't work very well at all. Um, okay, so I think 
you know, we've gone sort of ten minutes over time. So I think yeah. there's a there's a few more questions, but I'll 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 shut my mouth up now. <laughs> yeah, uh, we slightly overrun uh, our schedule. It was so interesting, and there were a lot of interactions which were happening. So that's the reason why I didn't disturb the flow. And we just um, um, uh, I have. Uh, for all the participants, I have uh, uh, posted the video claim code in the chat. You can take it from there. Now, I would uh, like to welcome uh, Dilip, uh, who is VP Professional Development for PMA Kerala Chapter to uh, convey the vote of thanks. Uh, Dilip, over to you. Thank you, Hari. Uh, yeah, hope everyone can hear me. Yes, that was, uh, yeah, that was a great session and uh, a lot of insight. Uh, I know we have 160 plus participants at one time, and uh, uh, most of you might be like knowing about a new job role now because most of you were program managers and project managers for a long time, and and thought that change management is actually part of your uh, job role. No, it's not. Uh, so even it's actually a very good insight for me as well. And uh, definitely looking forward to know more about change management in future sessions from Ron. That was definitely very informative, Ron. And uh, thank you very much for giving us uh, th this session uh, from from the PMI chapter board and the members of PMI. I would like to thank you very much and really appreciate for your time and the support you are giving to PMI chapters worldwide. Thank okay. you. Okay. Just, just to finish off, I'd just like to say again, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. This is part of a roadshow of mine, as I said before. Um, I will send the slides um, in PDF format, and I will also include in that email the, um, the QR code and a link to the survey. Please, if you can fill in the survey, please do, because the feedback is important for me to... Um, you know, make adjustments or changes to this delivery if I need to. There's also a question there that says, do you want to learn more about my change management training? You can say yes, <laughs> and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll send you more details. <laughs> That's right. it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, we will be sharing those uh, uh, slides and you um, uh, are uh, okay. uh, participants. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Yes. Thank you very much. Goodbye.